Hello students and welcome to my channel Maths Hub. So today in this video, I will tell you about laws of logics. So let us see what all laws we need to cover. So towards the end, we will try to simplify certain expressions, certain logical expressions, which get simplified to lowest form. Right? So before that, let us learn all the laws. So the first law that you need to learn is the idempotent law. Idempotent law says P is this junction P is equivalent to P, right? And the second sub law says P conjunction P is equivalent to P. So in every law, by every law name, we will be doing two sub laws, right? One will be with disjunction and the other will be with a conjunction symbol, right? So if you even remember one of the laws, the second law can be traced from the first one by replacing conjunction by disjunction or by disjunction with a conjunction, right? So the idempotent law says that if you have two logical statements, P and P, either you take the conjunction or you take the disjunction, you will get the same result. Right. So now let us try to prove these laws with the help of the truth table. Now, according to the truth table, the first law says that P disjunction P is equivalent to P. So we make P the input and we have P disjunction P. So when P is true and sim same P is true, so true or true will give us true. And similarly, false or false will give us false. And the second sub-law said that P conjunction P is equivalent to P. So we will have true and true is true, false and false is false. So you can see that this is equivalent to statement P. And similarly, P and P is also equivalent to the statement P. So every law that we are going to study now, you can prove it with the help of the truth tables. Right? So the second law now is the commutative law. So what is the commutative law? The commutative law says P or Q is equivalent to Q or P. That means the two statements are commutative in nature. It has nothing like that if you are writing P at the first place and Q at the first place, you cannot alter them. You can always alter. So it is said that they are commuting with each other. Similarly, the second law can be traced as you can just replace a disjunction symbol with a conjunction symbol. So you will get P conjunction Q is equivalent to Q conjunction P, right? Similarly, you can prove the commutative law with the help of the truth table. So we have two inputs P and Q. So we make a column for P or Q and another column for Q or P. So we are going to prove that P or Q is equivalent to Q or P, right? So when you take the inputs, true, 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 false, false, true, false, false. And when you calculate these two columns, you will find that both the columns are exactly same. And we can say that the two statements are logically equivalent, right? Similarly, we can prove the second sub law that is P and Q is equivalent to Q and P. And here also you can see that we have taken two statements P and Q and we have checked out all the possibilities of these truth values. And when we calculate the values of P and Q and Q and P, we get that both the truth values, they match with each other. And hence P and Q is equivalent to Q and P, right? So now let us come to the third sub law, third law in fact, that is the associative law. So the first sub law under associativity says that P or Q, and then if you take the or with another operator, uh, another variable R, it is the same as P or Q or R. That means in any way, if you take the disjunction, it will give you the same result, right? So similarly, the second sub law, you can see that the disjunction symbol has been replaced with a conjunction symbol. And similarly, we can also prove associative law, both the subcases with the help of the truth tables, right? So when you check this law, you will find that there are three inputs, that is P, Q, and R. And similarly, if we have three inputs, then how many choices are there? There are total eight choices of P, Q, R. So here we are going to prove that P or Q, if you take this first and then take with R, it is same as you first take Q or R and then take it with R, right? 
So it is one and the same thing. And you can just without looking into this table, you can draw it yourself and you can check that when you calculate it, you will find that these two columns, they are exactly the same, right? Similarly, the second log, sub law, you can also see that we have done it and it is also giving me the same result. P and Q and then and with R is equivalent to P and Q and R, right? So again, without checking it, you can just do it on your own and you can check that these two columns are giving us the same truth values, right? So all the laws you can check with the help of the truth tables, right? The next law, the fourth law, that is the distributive law. So what is the distributive law? Distributive law says that when we have P and Q or R, this conjunction it gets distributed over this term. So we will have P and Q or P and R, right? So it just gets open like a like in algebra. If you open a bracket term, it opens in the same way. So it is P and Q or R. So we open it like a bracket. So it is P and Q, then R with P and R. Similarly, the second sub law is P or Q and R is equivalent to P or Q and P or R, right? So you can also prove the distributive law with the help of the truth tables. So in this case, we are proving P and Q or R is equivalent to, we will open it up, P and Q and then R with P and R. R, right okay so you can it's just hidden behind my photograph so i'll just write the truth values here so this will give rise to true and this will be also right you can check it right okay now the next one Similarly, the second sub law is also proved in a similar way. And here we are proving P and Q, P or Q and R is equivalent to P or Q and with P or R, right? And similarly, here we will get true and true, right? So you can check it on your own whether you are getting the same truth values, right? Okay. The next law. The next law is the D Morgan's law. Now, what happens in D Morgan's law? D Morgan's law says that negation of P or Q is equivalent to negation P and negation Q. So here you can see that the negation gets opened up as a bracket term. So it is negation P. So negation of or becomes and, and you'll get a negation Q. Similarly, the second sub law is negation of P and Q. It is equivalent to negation of P or negation of Q. Likewise, you can also check the D. Morgan's law with the help of the truth tables. So here we are trying to prove that negation of P or Q is equivalent to negation of P and negation of Q. Right? Okay. And similarly, the second sub law that is negation of P and Q is equivalent to negation P or negation Q. Done? Next, the next sub law, that is the identity law. So the identity law says P or F. Now what is F here? F stands for a contradictory statement, right? So if you haven't watched my previous videos, do watch the previous videos to check what is contradiction. So contradiction is, it is a compound statement which always gives us a false result, right? So whenever we take P or F, we will always get back the same statement, that is P. And similarly, the second one is P and T. Now what is T? T stands for a tautology. So I've also covered tautology in one of my lectures. So do watch those videos. So tautology means a compound statement which always gives us a truth value. So P and T will always give us so similarly, we can prove this 
identity law also with the help of the truth tables. So we have one input as P and the second input as F. Now, when one of the input is P and the other input is F, P has two choices, true and false. But when it the statement is already false, it has no other choice other than false, right? So you can see that true or false will give us true and false or false will also give us false. So you can see that P is same as P or F. Likewise, we can also check the second sub law that is P and P is equivalent to P only. Right, and T here means it's always a tautology. So, irrespective of the values of P, it will always give us the values true. Right, so tautology always gives us a true value. Okay, so the next law is the absorption law. So, the absorption law says P or P and Q is equivalent to P. That means this term P and Q will get absorbed, and we will get answer as P. Likewise, the second sub law says P and P or Q is equivalent to P, right? So again, here P or Q will get absorbed and we will get the answer as P. Now, let us again check the absorption law with the help of the truth tables. And here in this, we are going to prove that P or P and Q is equivalent to P. And you can very well check that the columns of P and Q this one P or P and Q are exactly the same, right? Similarly, the second sub law where we were proving P and P or Q is equivalent to P. Again, P and this column, they are exactly the same, right? Then we have the negation law. The negation law says P or negation P is always a true statement. And P and negation P is always a false statement, right? Okay. So now, similarly, we can prove them with the help of the truth tables. So here we are proving P and P is equivalent to a true statement. And in the second one, we are proving P and negation P is always a false statement, right? Okay. So now, next. So now we have the double negation law. So the double negation law says negation of negation P is always equivalent to P, right? Done. So this also can be proved with the help of the truth table. So negation of negation P is equivalent to P. So these couple of laws you should remember to solve the questions, right? So now let us move on to the first question today, simplifying the statement. Now, the statement that we are given is negation of negation P and Q and P or Q. Now, always to put it correctly, always apply one law at a time. If you are applying multiple laws at a time, you will do an error, right? So, how to simplify it? So, every time when we are going to simplify it, we will write a equivalent symbol. So, in the first step, if you recall all the laws, we can see that the law can be applied over here. And which law, law is applicable? The De Morgan's law is applicable, right? So when we apply the De Morgan's law, we get negation of negation P and will become or and Q will become negation Q, right? And with P or Q. And we will write here which law we are using. We will write that we have used the De Morgan's law, right? Now, next. So now when we see the next step, we can see that law can be applied here. We are getting negation of negation P. So we can write this as P or negation Q and with P or Q. And which law is application here? We have applied the double negation law, right? Next. Now, where do you feel now which law can be applicable? Can we see that the distributive law is applicable P or A or B and A or C? So I can write it as P or negation Q and Q, isn't it? So here we have used the distributive law, right? So this is the distributive law. Next. Now, next, you can see that we can apply the negation law over here. So, this is P or 
and negation q is always a false statement using the negation law and finally what is p or f it is p according to the identity law right so you can see that the entire compound statement was reduced to a simple statement that is p with the help of the laws right so i hope this question is clear to everyone so now let us move to the next question and this is perhaps an exercise but i'll try to tell you how to solve it right so now let us see prove that negation of p or negation p and q and negation p and negation q are logically equivalent so we try to start with one of the sides so let's expand the terms which is which is given on the first side so let us take this term and let us try to simplify it now where can you see that you can apply the law can you apply the de morgan's law at first go so we can see that this is negation p this or will become and according to the de morgan's law and we will have negation of negation p and q right so we have applied the de morgan's law next so next step can we see that again de morgan's law is applicable over here so negation p and so now this becomes negation of negation p or negation q so again we have applied the de morgan's law so next now which law is applicable you can see we have applied we can apply the double negation law over here so this is negation p p or negation q right so here we are applying the double negation law now which law is applicable can we apply the distributive law so this will become negation p and p or negation p and negation q so we are applying the distributive law right and next what can we see that here this is our negation law so this is a false statement false or negation p and negation q so this is our negation law and finally what is f or some statement it is the same statement negation p and negation q using the identity law right so we had to prove that the statement and the statement are logically equivalent so that is exactly what we are getting as required in the question right so it's perhaps very easy but provided you remember the laws right okay so i'm giving you a question the next one as an exercise so do let me know in the comment section that what was the answer to the statement when you simplify it right okay so thank you so much i hope you have understood the video so if you like the video do hit the like button and those of you who haven't subscribed my channel do subscribe my channel to get the latest updated video so believe in yourself and you will definitely succeed thank you and have a nice day